The ambulance chasing civil rights activist and race baiter Al Sharpton has once again captured headlines across the country. However, this time it's not because of his own doing. In fact, it's the kind of publicity that he probably doesn't really want right now because it has recently been revealed by the smoking gun that the Reverend Al Sharpton was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant after federal agents caught him on tape negotiating a coke deal. Rather than face criminal charges, the Reverend panicked and agreed to become a snitch for the FBI. And with us right now to get his take on all this is former political prisoner and veteran of the Black Panther Party, Mr. Larry Pinckney. Larry, thanks for joining us today. You know what? I'm honored as always. Uh, it's especially for me, always a very special pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you. And right off the bat, I just I want to get to what do you think of all this? Al Sharpton was once a cocaine dealer. He flipped for the FBI. And I don't know, do you think he still does dirty work for the feds? I, I, I think that uh, once uh, one does that, how can one go back? All right. I mean, the reality is that he should never have uh, flipped, quote unquote, to begin with. And uh, so how could this person uh, be trusted? And, uh, you know, this, it is particularly disgusting uh, to me, it, uh, it, disgusting, period, that this man, Reverend Al, as I understand uh, Barack Obama refers to him as, uh, would engage in such uh, terrible, insidious activities. I mean, first, he, he, he was engaging in the selling of cocaine, et cetera, et cetera, or so it is alleged and strong reason to believe. Secondly, he flips, quote unquote, uh, to, to serve the interests of the FBI. As a veteran of the Black Panther Party, I want to point out historically that under the auspices of the infamous uh, COINTELPRO, Cointelpro. counterintelligence program, that the FBI actually used many such people, such as Al Sharpton, okay, to destroy the original, I'm talking about the original, not to be confused with the so-called new Black Panther Party, all right? But to destroy, uh, to infiltrate, to destroy, to disrupt, to neutralize, to decapitate the Black Panther Party. So to me, not only first and foremost as a U.S. citizen, but also as a veteran of the, of the party, I find this particularly repugnant. Well, yeah, and he, he was hanging out with some pretty shady characters, not to mention some very dangerous, wise guys. And the FBI agents made him wear a wire and recorded his conversations with powerful mob bosses and their associates. He also volunteered, Larry, to let the feds bug his phone and even let them infiltrate his friends in the music industry without them knowing it. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for taking down organized crime, but... Al Sharpton was a cocaine dealing wannabe thug, you know, and he flipped over to the FBI only to save his own ass. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now that the cat is out of the bag or, or the rat is out of the bag, I guess you could say, he has taken this position where he is publicly portraying him, himself as, as some sort of Elliot Ness. And, and you're not going to buy that. No, by no means. You know, uh, the very fact that this guy was running, running with, that is to say, associating with uh, people such as big time crime bosses and the so-called syndicate, so-called mob. Oh, by the way, when I say syndicate, let me be clear, I'm not talking about the current syndicate in, in the White House and Congress. I'm referring <laughs> to the syndicate on the quote unquote streets. But anyway, the very fact that he was running with them, that he had uh, an, uh, an open door to them really tells us all we need to know. I mean, imagine that. How could he have um, an opening, as it were, with them if he were not a part of them, working with them? And of course, the feds knew this and, and took full advantage of this. But let us understand that the feds will also flip. They'll use the mob to work against you, 
or they'll use you to work against the mob, and it really doesn't matter. And I, again, I'm talking about that syndicate in the streets, not the one in the White House. Well, that's right. And, and Al Sharpton has a long history of despicable behavior. And what about his shameful connections to the Tawana Brawley hoax? Back in the late 1980s, a 15-year-old girl from New York claimed that she was gang raped by a group of white police officers. She was found in a garbage bag with racial slurs written on her body and covered with feces. The incident obviously shocked the entire nation. People were just outraged. And Al Sharpton, well, he seized the opportunity for the national spotlight and became the young girl's spokesperson. The, the case quickly took an explosive edge. Racial tensions were extremely high. And then the facts began to surface. The truth began to unfold. And it was later determined by a grand jury that the teenage girl fabricated the entire story to avoid punishment for, for staying out too late. There was no evidence of her being kidnapped. No forensic evidence of any kind of any sexual attack, but that didn't stop Al Sharpton from assisting in perpetrating this horrific hoax. What are your thoughts on the Tawana Brawley case? Well, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, obviously it's, in, it's a continuation of Al Sharpton's modus operandi. I mean, this is what this guy does. That's why he's so close to the Obama administration. He's an opportunist. He will use, and I say historically, this is this is really nothing new. I was not surprised when information, documents, and files began to surface that uh, Al, Al Sharpton uh, was, and may very well still be, uh, an, an informant slash uh, provocateur. Because, by the way, being an informant doesn't just mean giving information. It means taking people into... Uh, your your confidence and them taking you into their confidence and you using that. That's provocateur action, okay? So having made that statement, I wasn't in the least bit surprised. Angered, of course, but not surprised. And as far as the, the, uh, the Broly case that you were just mentioning, of course, uh, uh, Sharpton and others take full advantage of that to divide and to keep Black, white, brown, red, and yellow people in this country divided, controlled, manipulated, and in fear of each other. And he still does the same thing today. What else is new? That's true. And, and back in the Tawana Brawley case, I mean, Sharpton knew that there was an incredible amount of mistrust in the black community about winning justice from legal institutions. So he preyed upon their emotions for personal gain. And it didn't matter that an innocent man might have gone to prison for kidnapping and gang raping a teenager. He wanted a, a race war. And by mm -hmm. making up this horrific story, it, it really undermines every young woman who's ever been brutally raped. It undermines everyone who's been uh, victimized by, uh, by racism. You know, mm -hmm. but this is the kind of guy, it seems like that this kind of behavior is now rewarded nowadays because now look where he's where he's at. He's got his own show on MSNBC. He's got his own talk show. He's got a best-selling book, and he's hanging out with Obama in the Oval Office. Well, to me, this is CoinTelPro all over again. All right, I keep saying to people for years now. I've been saying that the counterintelligence program never went away. Here's an example of how operatives, quote unquote, operatives work in such uh, a program. All right, to undermine, it, it actually undermines the security of, of, of our nation, of our people. Because when I say our people, I mean everyday, ordinary, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. Our people, okay? It undermines their security, our security, because it plays us off against each other. And then you have blood-sucking uh, opportunists. Uh, such, such as Sharpton, and he's not the only one, folks. A lot of people out there just like him. But as you said, look how he's rewarded. This guy uh, has been rewarded big time, and on top of that is, is, is uh, shown as being, quote, a leader. He's a misleader. Well, you're right. And I tell you what I'm getting tired of, and that is like the Fox News Network, for example. Let's not let them off the hook either, because I don't know how many times I've heard Bill O'Reilly, for example, ask his listeners, where is the black leadership right now? 
as if Al Sharpton and, and Jesse Jackson are the only black leadership that's available. That is an illusion. You and I both know, Larry, that there's plenty of good, reputable black people out there that are good leaders. But see, this is the thing with MSNBC, the entire mainstream news media, as well as the Obama administration, they want us to think that there's only these, you know, that these are the only leaders that are available. They want to divide us, not unite us. Right. That's right. That's right. And and I'm glad you honed in on that, Darren, because the fact is, is whether it's Fox News, whether it's NBC, MSNBC, PBS, it doesn't matter. The fact is, is they have an agenda and they, they feed on each other at the expense of we ordinary everyday people of all colors. They feed on each other. As I like to say, they feed from the same trough. So we have to be careful not to be sucked in either way, so-called right wing, so-called left wing. No, we're not birds. We don't have wings. Let's use our minds. Or as my Chicano, Chicano brothers and sisters would say, use your cabeza, use your head. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I want to get your comments. Al Sharpton is the president and CEO of the National Action Network. Last week, Eric Holder was invited to complain about his treatment as attorney general. Let's take a look. The last five years have been defined by significant strides and by lasting reforms, even in the face, even in the face of unprecedented, unwarranted, ugly, and divisive adversity. And if you don't believe that, you look at the way, and forget, forget about me, forget about me. You look at the way the Attorney General of the United States was treated yesterday by a House committee. Had nothing to do with me. Forget that. What Attorney General has ever had to deal with that kind of treatment? That's right. What President has ever had to deal with that kind of treatment? So, I guess Attorney General Eric Holder thinks we have amnesia or something because Nixon's attorney general, he was thrown in jail for the Watergate scandal. What do you think about his accusations? Well, I think it's another example of race or color baiting. It's an example of, again, keeping people uh, divided and at each other's throats, okay? I mean, what, as uh, uh, Albert Camus said, what better way to enslave a man than to give him the vote? But what good is the vote if you have nothing to vote for? And that's what this system does, this entire system. It, and, 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 and this is an example, the clip that you just showed, uh, is an example of how the public is manipulated. And people like Al Sharpton, opportunists, blood-sucking opportunists, are the ones who do it. Of all colors, by the way. Uh, it, it, but, but in this case, Sharpton and people like him are known historically for constantly, constantly uh, trying to uh, play on our differences rather than our commonalities. Black, white, brown, red, and yellow people have far more in common than we do uh, against one another. In fact, we begin at the point of being human beings. And whatever our problems, and yes, we have plenty of problems in this country, but what, whatever they are, we need to deal with them as a whole, collectively, as a whole. So this is exactly the opposite of what Sharpton uh, was inviting Eric Holder to do. And the very fact that an attorney general, U.S. attorney general, for crying out loud, would even address something uh, like that, I must say, is beneath the office of the attorney general. Well, I hear you there. No big surprise that it just happened to be on Al Sharpton's platform there at the National Action Network. Larry Pinkney, thank you for joining us. As always, we appreciate you being here. I thank you. You know, I love you all. All my greetings and my strength to the folks at InfoWars. Thank you so much, Darren. All right, buddy. That's right, folks. It's all about the illusion of choice. You think you have a choice, but actually you do not. For example, here's a chart that the uh, guys in graphics made for me. Did you know that the United States, we have 1,500 newspapers, 1,100 magazines, 
over 9,000 radio stations, 1,500 TV stations, and 2,400 publishers. And they are all owned by only six, count them, six corporations. And that, my friends, is the illusion of choice. Just like Al Sharpton representing black America is an illusion. That's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time, Texas time, that is. Until then, have a blessed evening, and we'll see you back right here tomorrow. Good night.